Now let's get back to our mini case. So we discussed Nespresso. And at the heart of the Nespresso business model is a machine with the pods, right? But let's look at what was particular in their business model that made them so successful. So they had a very deliberate strategy. Their strategy was to sell the Nespresso machines through retail channels, all the retail channels possible, to households, mainly, big part of their business. They would earn money from a one-time transactional sales, but most of that money would go to their partners, the machine manufacturers. Now, why do they sell through retail? What do you think? Because they want to reach as many people as possible. Now, here's where it gets interesting. For the Nespresso pods with the coffee inside that you put in the machine, they didn't use retail. They only sell through their own channels. First, mail order, call center, then obviously Nespresso.com, and then afterwards they built Nespresso stores which means they had to build as a key resource all their own channels. This is curious. Why did they make a difference between the machines and the pods? Well, because they understood the dynamics of the strategy there, that if they would get the machine in the households, basically, you don't have a choice anymore. You're locked in. Once you have the machine, you can only use Nespresso pods. So you would automatically go to their channels to get the pods. So the pods, they sell them only through direct channels. What's the consequence? Well, you're going to buy those pods in a repetitive way, again and again and away, recurring revenues. But most interestingly, well, if there's no more middleman, all the revenues go right into the pockets of Nespresso. So they earn more money by selling directly. So let's look at the left-hand side of the canvas. What do they really need to make this happen? Let's look at the key resources. What do you think are the key resources that Nespresso needs to make their business model reality? A couple of things. One of the most important parts are the patents. They have to protect their system so nobody else could make pods that would fit in that machine. And they defended that for a very long time. Turns out, one company found a way around that with biodegradable pods. Turns out that their, some of their patents are expiring in 2012. So it will be very challenging for Nespresso to rejuvenate their business model. What else do they need? Well, coffee, that's a no-brainer. But you know what? Coffee is really important because they try to, take, to get the best coffee. And then the brand. If you're in consumer goods like this, you better have a good brand to really make it possible. And then they built some really, really high-end production facilities to create the best pods with the best quality coffee inside in the world. Now let's look at the activities. I put three things there. First one, business to consumer distribution. It was the first time for Nestle in their company Nespresso to send small boxes to individuals before they used to send big pallets to retailers with their Nescafe brand where they were shipping coffee around the world. So they switched from business to business distribution in the Nespresso model to business to consumer logistics and distribution. That's a pretty important shift. And then they want to excel obviously at marketing because they're in consumer goods and the third part is production. They focus on really producing the best quality coffee. And when you have the left-hand side mapped out, very quickly, you can figure out the, co the costs. Production, business to consumer distribution, and marketing. And boom, you have the entire business model on one poster. Isn't that interesting? Now there's another reason why I use the Nespresso case. When they started out, Nespresso almost failed. They almost went bankrupt with exactly the same product and technology. Isn't that curious? Well, turns out that they 
tried in a joint venture with machine manufacturers to sell Nes the Nespresso system through the sales force of the machine manufacturer to office buildings. And you know what? The offices weren't interested and the sales force of the machine manufacturers weren't interested either. So this business model didn't work, fell apart with exactly the same technology. So here, the difference between success and failure was not the product and technology alone. It was all the pieces of the business model in combination with a great product and technology. Now, Nestle didn't stop there. They went on to create another system, Dolce Gusto, which focuses on cappuccino. And you might know that the cappuccino market and the Nespresso market, the espresso market, are not the same thing, two different market segments. So we might say, well, this is just a different machine. They probably use the same business model. They didn't. They figured out that it would make more sense to use a different business model for this machine. And they didn't stop there. They started innovating in other fields and they came up with a new brand and technology called babyness where you would have baby formula in a pod you could take the pod put it in the machine press a button and in 30 seconds you would get the bottle ready for your baby they used a different business model for this one and they didn't stop there they went on with something that they're t they're, they're testing now in 2012 which is special tea with a different business model, obviously. So what does this mean? That Nestle, in their business, they're going beyond a product portfolio towards a business model portfolio. That's pretty interesting. What was my biggest learning in the last couple of years using the business model canvas? It was actually going beyond the blah, blah, blah. I've seen many groups, entrepreneurs, executives discussing business models, thinking about business models. By using the canvas, they started really thinking deeply about each building block that they would put onto the canvas. They negotiate, they get to a consensus, and every block that's up there makes sense. So you start having a good understanding as an individual and as a team of what the business model is and you will have much, much better conversations.